Ready? Hello, everyone. I'm Joe Danielson. Alongside here me is uh, Justin Forster. Uh, we are ready to bring you this Class 4A, 2A, the Class 2A semifinal between the Waverly Shell Rock Go Hawks and the Pella Lady Dutch. Uh, we had a, a nice uh, a back and forth first game here, kind of a uh, one on one kind of you know one uh, moment decided all for the uh, uh, Bishop Heeland Crusaders last match. And uh, coming out here today, we see another two high scoring teams, kind of fast paced teams, Waverly Shell Rock and both Pella coming out. Each team has. Uh, a player with over 30 goals, and uh, kind of talk about that for us uh, here, Justin, in the pregame. Well, well, I'll tell you what, uh, Waverly Shawrock actually, uh, they beat the Pella Lady Dutch uh, earlier on in the season. So there's a little bit of a mindset here, uh, the psychology. So they've, it'll be a little bit different today from what I hear. Uh, Pella will come back, and I think they will uh, make a game of it today. I mean... They've got uh, Waverly Shawrock have Kenzie Rowling up front. She's a freshman forward, scored 30 goals. I mean, you look at Pella Lady Dutch, you've got Grace Held that plays up front with 31 goals. And Maddie Canefield as well with 14. And now we'll go here to, to the Buena Vista logo introduction. And the lineups are brought to you again by Buena Vista University. We'll go to the field here for our lineup announcer. Number 
led by head coach Warren Bauer, who is assisted by Danielle Weiss and Corey Ronsky. Our officials for today's <laughs> And we're back here from the County Soccer Complex, uh, home of the 2018 Iowa Farm Bureau Girls State Soccer Championship on the Mid-American Energy Championship Network. You are guys are again watching CISN.TV. So far, you saw the uh, early game here from Bishop Heeland getting the victory there to move on to the finals. And here we have the Pella Lady Dutch taking the field. Alongside the Waverly Shell Rock Go Hawks, we kind of talked a little bit briefly about uh, the pregame. Uh, anything left to add here, Justin, before we get started? Yeah, I had a conversation with both coaches. Uh, the Waverly Shell Rock coach, Lauren Bauer, is very interesting. Plays a 4-3-3 with a three rotation in the midfield. I mean, but it's interesting to see. I mean, they they 19 and 0 right now, so we could be in for a matchup here. The Pella Lady Dutch I spoke to. Mark Howard, they'll play a 3-5-2. Like I said earlier, they lost to Waverly Shell Rock in a, in a, earlier on in the season. So we're, we're in for a cracking match here today. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Yep, and uh, we'll have Pellas out here in the green. Waverly coming out in the white uniforms on the far side. Bit of bunch up play there, but uh, both teams kind of try to get something going here. A nice clear from the Pella Dutch back line. Yeah, they're just trying to get a feel of each other. You know, at this point, Joe, just uh, see how things pad out. Yep, Waverly uh, working that far left corner as the Pella defense gets the, gets the possession back here. Be interesting to see what happens. Uh, there's a couple of leaders in the. Uh, the Pella side, you got Maddie Cadefield playing in the midfield. You got Grace Held up front. Both of them have scored some goals. Grace Held has scored 31 goals so far this season. So, but then you look at the flip side of that. Waverly Shellrock. They got Kenzie Rowling up front. She's the freshman forward. Scored 30 goals and 12 assists so far this year. So, they're going to look at her to uh, turn things on. Yep, and the ball's moved into the midfield here after Lensing throws it in. A little bit of a traded possessions back and forth as the uh, ball switches fields. Here come the Gohawks again here, surveying. Down the left side, nice challenge there. Ball won by the Gohawks as they continue down. And in. Oh, has a man open. Just off the crossbar and outside. That was a good early charge from Waverly Shell Rock. Yep, Kennedy Riken. Yep, Kennedy Riken. Junior forward scored 14 goals so far this season. She pounced onto that one, hit the post. And here's the throw in back into the box. Nice clear out from the Lady Dutch. From what I see so far, the Waverly Shell Rock wanted to, wanted to gain on an opportunity, maybe an early opportunity in the game, take advantage. Yep, and they'll drop back here as the Lady Dutch uh, switch the fields here and get ready to kick. That is Josie Lichtig. Lichtig again gets the ball back and then goes for the clear off her foot to the corner here. Oh, a nice <laughs> fight there for the ball from from the show after. Grace Hull putting a bit of pressure in there. Looks like uh, number four, Lexi Brown's got a bit of pace and assistance up front. Yep, the Gohawks really have showed a lot of speed so far off in this match. And 
here they come again. A little back and forth from two teams here. Uh, this one's going to go out of bounds. Pella will look to run on the uh, near, near side throw in. That is Erica Bosser. The ball is back to her. She can't control it on out of bounds. Shell Rock, the quick throw into a little bit of chaos. They come away with it and they're looking to go down the short side. Looking for that give and go there, just couldn't get it started. Oh, nice play there from the Pella Dutch Lexi Brown, the junior forward. Moves it into the middle. Brown. And just can't quite come up with it again from Maddie Canfield. She found her in the middle. Canfield had an opportunity to her right where Grace Held was 1v1. Might, might have been the better option. And they'll continue their attack here, thrown in the middle. Nice response from the Gohawks. <laughs> Waverly looking to run here, looking to set up their forwards. Each forward far playing, hugging the half line. Nice challenge and win there. It's the Gohawks patient on their defense. Looking to work it into the midfield. Communication breaks down there a little bit and Pella clears it. Your players calling find a feed out there. That's kind of what they need right now. A little bit of a chaos, kind of struggling to complete a pass, complete a run. Canefield looking physical. to create Ref something as she's taken down there. It was a fair tackle. Yep, as you said, a clear tackle. The referee letting him go. We did see that last match too here, and that is kind of what you want to see in these semifinal games. You want to play it as Pella comes down on the attack through the middle. Grace Hull can be dangerous. She's got a bit of pace about her. If she gets it, runs at defenders. She'll break the line. Got a lethal left foot. A nice ball in. Just can't quite run onto it. There is Lexi Brown. A little bit of confusion there from both teams as uh, no one's quite sure who's possessing the ball. Nice play into the box from Pella and an another clear from the Gohawks. Still working here, short side. Looking to draw the foul. Pella's going to go quick, though. Gohawks, short side, taken back by Pella and out of bounds on Waverly. The Lady Dutch look to play that middle of the field, kind of go out wide and come back in. And another nice ball on in, and but that will be for the keeper. Erica Bossard looking for the long ball in behind for Grace Held. Yep, and Gabby Berman, the Waverly Shellock goalkeeper, will come out there and have no problem with that. She clears the ball to the middle where the Go Hawks look to change fields here and get a run down the near side. Good defensive work there from Carolyn Bradley. And Bradley here again will challenge. A nice shot straight on and easy work for Chloe Griffin as the ball kind of loses power there once it gets into the box. Yeah, it was a long range shot. So it was a matter of formality for Griffin as Grace Held looks to break the line here. Kind of danger here for the Go Hawks as they got the ball on their own side of the field and they'll go for the throw in looking for the clear. Oh, yep, and the referee will blow his whistle there. Uh, lose that was Lexi Brown, gets a warning there. Uh, setting up 
Cambry Mason here, the defender, to look to send the ball forward. And she does a nice kick into the midfield. It's another ball sent over the top. The keeper's going to kind of come out, and then she'll decline. Caroline Bradley actually did a good job there earlier, screening the ball into uh, Kenzie Rowling. Working with it and stolen here by the Gohawks. Down the middle and into the, into the center. A shot and a nice diving save there from Chloe Griffin into her outstretched hands. In the box, a nice find there from the Gohawks into the middle of the box, and that was... Uh, the strike wasn't quite connected, but uh, still worth the dive at the end of the day. Referee <laughs> blows his whistle again here, right around the uh, center of the field. No substitutions yet. In their first game, we did see quite a lot of subs. Uh, with the temperature on the field being a factor, we might have to see one of those again today. We did take those uh, water breaks at 20 minutes left in each half. I'm assuming they will be back again. Go Hawks here surveying. Far side of the field. She turns it in. Looking for the middle. And out of out bounds. Out for goal kick. Goal kick. And it looks like she touched that ball with her hand. Out of bounds. All right, a clear, and here come the Gohawks again. I see Ellie Howard, the uh, number five, playing in the midfield. Looks like the holding midfielder for uh, Pella. Her dad is actually the head coach, Mark Brown. Here we go, the Gohawks again. Good defense down there from uh, Jackie Lensing, the junior. Waverly Shellrock, a nice shot from the left foot. A little ways out from the goal box, though. Not much of a chance to make it in there from uh, Canfield. A good thought, though, with the left. As Grace Hald looks to capitalize with a flick on, looking for Lexi Brown. This could oh. be dangerous. As rolling keepers come out. Good play from the keeper there to come out and aggressively grab that one. Taylor Peterson had the ball. Basically only the keeper to beat right on the 18 and a, a nice strong save. Keeper did well, she had to come. She couldn't get caught in no man's land. Yep, she had to commit and she did and made it there and made the uh, deflection and picked the ball up. Yep. Here comes the shell rock and they're gonna get called offsides there and the and they're opposing uh, goalie box. That'll give Pella some time to set up their shape here, get some uh, attackers downfield. This game could be one in the midfield, to be honest with you. Yep, we can see kind of like last game, uh, Waverly Shellrock is very aggressive, and here's a Pella is on the attack. A nice steal. Held with a shot. A one -on -one Looking at shot, it's, and it's good. It's wow, one what a nil. nice one hand in the air. She celebrates. It Just happened. casually walks back. I got that one. Yeah, what, and that was probably. Did we have her on the edge of the box there? Probably on the 18, right around there. A steal, and that's another momentum like, shifting goal. Like I said earlier, Joe, you can't give. Grace hold time and space. She'll take you on. She, all she needs is three yards of space. And she would put the killer instinct there. Yep, and Fantastic she had it right. right there, you know, three yards, two uh, defenders on her, and the one touch to the side of the goal that the goalie wasn't in for a beautiful goal. And we were I was just going to mention that they're having a little bit of trouble breaking through that uh, Waverly Shell Rock midfield, and we're going to see how they do here. 
So let's see how they respond. Yeah, they were. Shell Rock now have been shocked after beating Pella during the season. A bit of a shock as they look to break the line. Yep, a nice aggressive move outside. They had the numbers and a shot in and a nice save from Chloe Griffin, the junior. She's had a handful of uh, nice saves here so far, a good two or three. Again, more midfield play, kind of giving back possession. Sapella leading into a nice give and go to the outside. Ball in and stopped again by. That was a lovely ball played out wide by Grace Hold. Booming your confidence right now. Split their line. Yep, we have a goal there. Has been a little bit of delay on our big scoreboard here. They got the goal up last game and it'll be here soon. Pella will get the throw in. Right off Waverly Shell Rock. Still no subs here as we're about six minutes away from that first water break. Pella on the attack. Ball into the midfield. I think both coaches are looking to see how the momentum swings and for the players to try and get a rhythm of the game. I think that's very important rather than just making rotating subs all the time. And I'd have to agree with you there too as we saw that. A nice stop there from Jessica Lensing. She's been, she's made a few of those defensive plays so far where she just stones the defender. Shellrock here has got a setup for the run. Down the outside. Looking for the give and go again here. Shell Rock, oh, ball slips in past the defense and just cleared barely off the goal goalie's fingers. Rowling was the nearest attacking player there for Waverly. Didn't pounce on the opportunity as she takes a strike. A good shot from Waverly. Another nice save, though, from Straight Chloe Griffin. Griffin. <laughs> Griffin has had a lot of work uh, early on here, and she's done well. Yeah, she's maintaining her starting position. The starting position and goal has been good. And we'll have our first substitute of the game for the Lady Dutch. Number five, Ellie Howard comes off. I believe Sonia Lettig comes in as a lady. Comes in. Thank you that for that. Well, that's another perk of being up here in the the crowd. A nice clear sets up a run. Nothing doing here though for Waverly. The ball got past the back line for the Dutch. Just nobody there to receive it. And Waverly will have another go at it here. Another strong defensive play down the middle from Kennedy Reekin. She brings it in. A, a nice, strong uh, kick right to the center, however. Into again, the cool Griffin. hands of Griffin. Yep, Griffin again. And you know, as she uh, she gets those stops like that, it, it kind of get boosts her confidence, too. Here comes the Dutch. bit of stoppage here. Referee speaks to uh, Kennedy Reckoner Lexi Brown over there and as Sarah Campbell the senior midfielder will set up here. Waverly pushing their uh, attack forward to receive this ball and as Grace Hello. Held looks to break on the right hand side well taken care of. Yep, and once she won that ball, there wasn't much uh, challenge. Here 
Here we here comes Waverly Shellrock again. Kennedy Reekin out here on this right side. She's fast down the line. She's looking for somebody to receive a pass. She's got wide open scores and a defensive breakdown really. Kennedy Reekin just finds I believe Kenzie rolling the freshman wide open in front of a goal and that's all you can ask for as an, uh, as an attacking player. There was a bit of a breakdown there. Nobody was watching. Rolling snuck in. Nobody picked her up. Managed to get onto it as a cool finish. I felt the goalkeeper Griffin might have covered her near post a little more than that with her starting position. So we're all tied up here after that equalizing goal. This right side has really been under attack from the uh, Go Hawks all day long. And here they come again. Just a missed touch there from Lagan. A little bit of back and forth play here as the Dutch try the opposite side of the field. That takes uh, Roland's tally up to 31 goals this season. Here comes Hild again. She's fast out there down the line. You don't want one of those balls to slip through like that on those uh, outside as we reverse field. And here, come, here comes Waverly Shellrock. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. The keeper's coming out halfway and we will play it off of her. Griffin clears the lines. Yep, they do have to readjust their line, Pella, as uh, Waverly's got three, three attacking players kind of on the left side, looking to set something up, and they do here. Midfield finds another open girl right in the middle. Here comes Reekin, she's looking to play. Another strong shot on goal from Campbell, and it's stopped. From Chloe Griffin again. Grayway in the midfield, number five for Waverly Shorrock. Showed a bit of composure in the build up with, the, with that attack. Griffin will easily get that one and she'll look to calm down her players here. So they boot it out. Kick from the Dutch falls back to the back line of Waverly Shellrock and they move it into the midfield. Good passing combos here from the uh, Go Hawks. So they work down the middle of the field. Oh, just a missed touch there from Natalie Langan. And she knew it too. She was a little disappointed in herself. She couldn't get a, a touch on that. Game's kind of slowed down here. Is uh, this would be a, a point where we were taking a water break uh, last game, and uh, the game will slow down. I mean, they've been going 19 minutes left of the game. There's going to be a phase in the game where it will slow down until the fresh legs come in. Yep, and uh, you think right now too is a little bit how <coughs> which team responds first, which team gets back here as Pella sets up. A lot of back and forth back here in this midfield in the defensive zone for the uh, Waverly Shell Rock Go Hawks. A little bit of a one on one there, and uh, the Go Hawks will re retain possession as the ball just. Well, there we go. There's our water break, I believe. We're going to walk, jog it all in here for 18 minutes left in this first half. Our official will come over here and shake hands with his linesman, and they'll head on in and discuss this first, well, 20 minutes of our first half. And uh, with that, we're going to take a quick break here for our water break. This is the number one social streaming platform dedicated exclusively to local Iowa sports, CISN.TV.
They say Buena Vista University is in the middle of a bunch of fields. Hey guys, wait up! Game on. They say our idea of fun is morning tea. An afternoon tea. And anytime tea. And we hang out like bumps on a log. They say Storm Lake, Iowa isn't in the center of the action. And when we study, we're not exactly grounded. But you know what we say. You gotta see it to believe it. They say Buena Vista University is in the middle of a bunch of fields. Hey guys, wait up! Game on. They say our idea of fun is morning tea. And afternoon tea. And anytime tea. And we hang out like bumps on a log. They say Storm Lake, Iowa isn't in the center of the action. And when we study, we're not exactly grounded. But you know what we say. You gotta see it to believe it. Welcome to Fairway, where we're not a mega food, fashion, fitness, you name it center. For 80 years, we've been your neighborhood meat and grocery store, focused on cutting you the highest quality meats for your backyard barbecue, providing the freshest ingredients for your summer salad, and making sure your shopping trip is as easy and sweet as grandma's blueberry pie. So while others try to put it all under one roof, at Fairway, we put our all into meat and grocery. Welcome to Fairway, where we're not a mega... And we're back here from Des Moines, Iowa at the County Soccer Complex for the Iowa High School Girls Soccer Tournament, State Soccer Tournament 2018. Uh, Joe Danielson along here with Justin Forrester. We've seen, uh, well, we're at a water break here, we've seen the first 20 minutes of the second game of the day, and it's been a, uh, we're sitting here at a one-to-one -one tie. It's been an exciting game, Joe. I mean, Grace Held with the first goal, she's given half a yard, beat a defender, slotted it past the goalkeeper into the far post, and it was within uh, six minutes the equaliser came in with Rowling, the top goal scorer for uh, Waverly Shellshock, broke into the box, nobody was picking her up, it was like everybody watched her, Keeper didn't cover the near post. Griffin was caught off, and it was a pretty easy finish for her. I mean, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how both sides come out for the last 18 minutes of the game. Um, if they're going to change much or just keep it the same. Um, Pella playing a 3-5-2, Waverly playing a 4-3-3. My guess is they'll just keep it the same moving forward. Yep, as you said, Grace held. They, go, they gave her a little bit of room to breathe, and... She took it and scored, and that was nice. That was an impressive goal. Also, just one little touch, kind of got room for the defenders and found herself open for the far side of the net. She's that type of player. Uh, I mean, you got two players that I know in that uh, Pella team, Maddie Canefield and uh, Grace Held. They both play for Sporting Iowa here in Des Moines, so they've had the luxury of some good coaching. All right, and our players uh, have taken the field here again. Looks like they're probably going to be a little bit rejuvenated, as we did see a little bit of fatigue start to set in in that first half. Campbell to throw into two defenders. Pella's looking to clear the ball through Lexi Brown. Stolen into the middle. Lexi Brown's played pretty well for Pella out here. She's a tough, quick, quick uh, forward. And here comes Waverly Shellrock far side. Ball in. Has another open girl and just a little too much. Can't get the foot over the ball and the shot sails over the goal. A nice challenge there again from Griffin, the goalkeeper. Lovely touch by Canefield in the midfield. 
They have a lot of, there has been a lot of play in the, the midfield for both teams. Kind of not going either one way for the other, pretty even. A nice play from Heald again, a one touch, and then they both players kind of fall on top of each other as the ball is cleared into a goal kick for. Grace Heald can be a, a handful for some defenders because she will press you, she'll put in the effort. Uh, like there, she just uh, put the center back under pressure. Yep, a burst of speed there from her. Here comes Waverly Shellrock, top of the 18, and then deflected off a Pella defender who got her foot in the way. Another ball in the box here. The keeper's going to come out and just barely take that one. Josie Licktie with a, a very good block there in the end. That ball was goal bound. There we go again, and for Waverly Shellrock in the middle. Looking outside again as Haley Kent, and it's a one on one with the defender, and again, Griffin showing that speed to get down to the corner of the box and pick up the ball. No danger there. A long kick, a nice header, nice technique on that header we saw there. Here comes Waverly. A oh, nice position there, just nobody there to receive the flick. A little miscommunication between Pella. Waverly still on the attack again as it starts to get a little chippy. Far side of the field. Here comes Pella, takes it to the goal side, and a nice flick towards the center, and cleared out by the Pella defense. Here comes Lexi Brown to throw. At this point, it's about somebody getting a foot on it, controlling possession. Yeah, I think, think that's what the game needs right now. Waverly Shellrock is uh, looking for a shot if they can get possession of the ball. Yeah, uh, I'm not too sure about 3-5-2 uh, with Pella right now because they need to tighten it up. They're back three or two uh, spread apart, and that's how Roland snuck in and scored the goal. I mean, I think they need to change the shape at the back, yep. do something different. And we've seen a little bit of a miscommunication yeah. also back there, and you really yeah. you really need to be uh, tight. If you play three at the back, you've got to be very tight. So you see there another open defender with room to move. There we go, Shellrock in front of goal and deflected again. Ball cleared out, nobody there. Oh, and a bit of collision. Pella again just has to control the ball here. They're just giving it up to the Go rolling, Hawks. Rolling up front for Waverly looks like a handful as she gets the ball. And trying to get a run going there. The right thought, but Griffin again comes out to catch that. She would. See if there was a runner there, she would be forced to stay in goal. Right. She wouldn't have been able to came out, come out. There comes Pella, another chance. Looking for numbers. <laughs> Lexi and uh, Grace Hull kind of got tangled up there. Well recovered by Canefield. 
Yep, a bit of a changing possessions there, just trading them back and forth. Off. Here comes Waverly Shovrock trying to go middle. Again, just trying to go middle, but cannot get through Kaylee ha Haley Kent over there. Playing well to keep the ball on her side. And the throw. Waverly again. Looks like we're going to have a substitution, John, on the far side. Double substitution for Pella. Canefield goes off with Macy Schultz. A throw in and headed immediately out of bounds to change possessions. Pella will now take the throw. Looking to reverse the field. The ball flies, falls behind, and here comes Held again. Another chance for her. And, oh, just barely deflected off the goalie. She gave it everything her had. she had that time for Grace Held. If, if Erica Bossard was following up and not watching what Grace Held was doing, she might have been there for the rebound to finish it off. Here comes the counterattack from Waverly Shellrock. Kent on the outside, good work, but just responded on defense from Jackie Lansing. Shellrock, Waverly Shellrock with time and a nice ball in. And again, there's Chloe Griffin, the keeper. We've got 10 minutes left here in this first half as a little bit of a ball breaks through and could have been trouble there, just cleared out by the Pella back line. And they really want to look to <coughs> possess a ball like that and get it to uh, one of their players on the outside yeah, to move I think, it up forward. I think, this, I think she had time to uh, bring the ball down and just play it out. Jackie Lensing. That is something that uh, sometimes so, defenders don't sometimes use Sometimes they panic, yeah. As Griffin goes in, she's dropped it and rolling in. Cleared off the oh, line. Great save there. Wow, a bunch of chaotic events there in front of goal as the keeper goes off uh, Chloe Griffin's hands and number 18, Zoe Lichtig is there. Wickert with a clearance off the line. Yep, and Wichtig that was definitely the goal, goal with yeah. a header, yep. She was the last person there and got did all she could. A nice ball in to Kent. And just ran out of space over there with the right foot. Haley Kent has done some good uh, relief work. Well, on Kent's this. actually got inside uh, Bossard, inside her, and then the uh, the left back in the back three. <coughs> That's the sort of space you can't allow it. Bossard needs to close the space up, not allowing her to get in. Those are the, that's the type of space that's leading to uh, the players from uh, Waverly to break the line and get in between the lines. Yep, and Waverly's looking to place a, a player right on the, the top of the goal and uh, close yep. to the post and look for options off there. Another one-on-one -on -one down there and... Uh, Josie Lichtig again has been strong on the on the back line there for Pella. Yeah, she's done very well. I mean, she's very quick. She gets across the attacking player. Just managed to kick it out for a corner. And here it is. 
On in top of the 18, and there's a foot on it just up in the air. Lexi Brown sees a bunch of field in front of her. Over to Heald. It's very good defending. It's 1v1 with Grace Held. It's good defending, too. It's clearing the ball out of there so Heald can't get a foot on it. Good idea with the touch on. Just not enough pressure there. As Keeper came off the line late, but yep. manages to smother it up. Gabby Berman, the sophomore goalkeeper for the Gohawks. A little bit of back and forth here about receiving passes to the opposite team. And now Waverly Shell Rock controls here, looking to go back outside. And they do. They get a ball through the backside. Another foot race. That ball has to be won there. Lenson, let it go past. Just get your body behind the ball. Head it, maybe. Yep. Relieve some pressure. Look tie with another. Good defensive effort there as another substitution. Kent, Kent's leaving. Foul there, Pella again. Waverly Shell Rock close, will. Could have been a foul. Yep, Waverly Shell Rock will grab that. Throw in here and reset in the same spot. The Trying refereeing's actually been good up to now. <laughs> Rolling with a nice little ball into the box. Tries to go behind her. She just kind of ran out of space and looked to play the ball behind her, but. Nothing there as the Pella Dutch back line clears it. They need to close the gaps. They're too deep. They need to step up. They're way too deep. It's allowing it's allowing the Waverly Shore Rock players to get in between the lines. For example, Kurt. Rowling's come out wide here, so there's a little bit of a change. They've noticed the weakness here as Rowling tries to break through. But they've noticed the weakness out here, possibly, where maybe Rowling gets on the ball and runs at them. Yep, on this on change. this far side or this close side corner, you see the uh, the holes that yep. come from the midfield as the play, not enough players are up above here. They got Miranda Cut back in there as a nine, so they're looking for a little bit of pace. She needs. I, I would maybe tuck them in. It's three versus three basically up front here. It's tough. Those situations, it's one v one. That needs to be nullified and fixed. The ball's played right to the spot again here. You always want pressure and cover when the ball goes in. Pressure, cover, so that if you play the three, the one presses and the other two need to cover. Here it comes. He's going to play on. Referee says play on. He had his whistle to his mouth, and it looked like he's about ready to. That was good advantage there by the ref. Yep, I thought so also. He's uh, close to blowing that. Whistle, but I'm actually being nice because the referee's son is like sitting one one seat away from us. <laughs> Grace Holt, lovely little control. There we go. Here comes the keeper, and yep, Chloe Griffin. She's Cody been Griffin pretty, well pretty there, good yeah. about choosing, her, choosing yeah. her spots of coming out to get the ball. And we've got about three minutes left here in this first half. Pella being patient. Plays the ball into Held. Lovely touch from Held. Oh. Gets it onto her favorite right do? foot. She finds it is immediately has two defenders on her, but Pella's still down defending. Look for her again. You're probably going to find that withheld. They're going to look to play a ball into held again. And the flick on 
a nice play, but the ball just... That was a good little effort. Grace Holt's got to try and isolate herself 1v1 and work off the shoulders of the two center halves. Yep, she's working very hard to get open, and then when she finds herself with the ball, it's, it's harder to make something happen once you do so much work to get open. Yes, totally agree with that. The speed of actions need to be a bit quicker. Play to get the ball play, get the ball play. Come spell it on there. Looking to create something. Near side here. Lexi Brown needs to be a little more aware of her surroundings. A little check over the shoulder, see what's coming in. The referees uh, having a word with a couple of the players here. Just a little warning. Up and a, a strong hip there, and we can kind of hear it from our the reaction from the fans. That was a, a bit of a hard foul there that will bring up the free kick for Pella. Here she goes. And just a little strong right into the scrum, and uh, the Dutch can get ahead on it. <laughs> With 20 seconds here, the Go Hawks will look to clear it out. And the ball back to the corner will probably take us into half here with 10 seconds left on the board. Yeah, I think it's a matter of formality now. I think that's it for the half. Both teams need to go in and regroup. Come out with a plan for the second half. It's like a game of chess. Who's going to win? Yep, tied at halftime here from uh, County Soccer Complex. I am Joe Danielson, and alongside me is uh, Justin Forrester. And we're here on the number one social streaming platform dedicated exclusively to Iowa sports, CISN.TV. We just got news that... Uh, Well, to sum up the first half, I think uh, Pella need to actually tighten up at the back. If they're going to play a back three, they're too spread out. It's allowing gaps. So basically, Roland and Kurt are finding themselves in between the lines because they're too far apart. There's no cover when the ball's played into feet. So they need to fix that. Hopefully, they can fix that moving forward. Although Grace Hold and, and uh, Lexi Brown up front can still be a problem and a threat. And I think that something might happen in the second half. <coughs> Having said that, this, I think this game is going to be won in the midfield. So it's the team that controls the midfield, I think, is going to win the game. Yep, you did mention that, uh, that midfield play. And that's something we have seen is a lot of players in the midfield. And whoever can tighten that up will probably take this one home. So we're going to go to break here at halftime of the County Soccer Complex. This is CISN.TV. Farmers care. Learn more at iowapork.org. Have to get their feet here on the pavement and big. Don't Come on, let's get away. 
being in Des Moines, you just get it through the experience. I'm a fan of a lot of our like fast, casual cuisine. A little theater, some great restaurants. There's a lot going on musically. If you can't find things to do in Des Moines, you must be boring. This is a magical place. All you have to do is just fashion, fitness, you name it, center. For 80 years, we've been your neighborhood meat and grocery store focused on cutting you the highest quality meats for your backyard barbecue, providing the freshest ingredients for your summer salad, and making sure your shopping trip is as easy and sweet as grandma's blueberry pie. So while others try to put it all under one roof, at Fairway, we put our all into meat and grocery. Welcome to they say Fairway. Buena Vista University is in the middle of a bunch of fields. Hey guys, wait up. Game on. They say our idea of fun is morning tea. And afternoon tea. And anytime tea. And we hang out like bumps on a log. They say Storm Lake Iowa isn't in the center of the action. And when we study, we're not exactly grounded. But you know what we say. You gotta see it to believe it. They say Building a strong community doesn't happen overnight. It takes a vision for the future the ability to turn a challenge into a success, and individuals who inspire new generations of growth. Greater Des Moines has done a lot of growing over the years, and so have we. At Brick Gentry Law, your success is something that we create together. Thank you for making us a part of your community. Thank you for 50 years. Building a strong community. This summer, the top athletes in the country return to America's heartland. Be there June 21st through the 24th, live at Drake Stadium in Des Moines, as the superstars of today and tomorrow put it all on the line. And Simpson to win it. At the USATF Outdoor Championships. Hastings holds on to win. To catch all of the action live, purchase tickets now at draketicks.com slash USATF. The USATF Outdoor Championships are back in Iowa. Don't miss it. Here's this to everyone who believes in competition and good sportsmanship, who knows it's not about the trophies or the medals, but rather the lessons learned. For those who understand, it's not whether you win or lose, just that you give your best. So go ahead, place them up, take the field, have fun, and play. For the experience, for the memories, for the love of the game, Shields. Hi, Ron here, head coach of Westside Auto Pros. When your car's on the injured reserve, you want to get it back in the game as soon as possible. I know that. That's why you need to bring it here to Westside Auto Pros. I have a team of experts that can fix almost every automotive injury, whether it's a fractured joint, a brake, or if your car just got its bell rung, no problem. We can even do a complete physical on your car to make sure it's game ready for the entire season. So bring your car to Westside Auto Pros and we'll get it back in the starting lineup in no time. Hey, you guys are dogging it back here. Let's move it, move it, move it. Hi, Ron here, head coach. Miss your hometown clothing store? The one that had it all? Everything to get the work done all in one place? GNL Clothing is your hometown Iowa store. Stop in and see us, or we're only a click or phone call away. Family owned for nearly a century. GNL Clothing, 1801 Ingersoll, Des Moines.
No, you're good. Yeah, no worries. All right, here we are again for the second half of the 2A state semifinal for the Iowa Girls High School Soccer State Championship 2018, presented by the Mid-American Energy Championship Network. We've got a 1-1 draw here at halftime between the Waverly Show Rock Go Hawks and the Powell Lady Dutch. You see the Go Hawks taking the field here ready, and they uh, finished that first half pretty aggressively uh, on the attack. Uh, for most of that, that after the water break we had there with 19 minutes left, we saw the Go Hawks really uh, playing strong and attacking the Dutch defense. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Uh it looked like the Pella Lady Dutch were sitting back and looking to counter-attack. And they're looking for Lexi Brown and uh, Grace held up front. who did cause problems. Uh, they're, they're rotating three for Waverly Shellrock are doing a good job. Uh, c maintaining and containing uh, and keeping everything in front of them. It's really hard to break that line. And like I said to you, it's, it's all going to depend in the second half. I'll be interested to see how... Uh, Pella come out the second half maybe they'll change a few things we'll have to see what happens uh, maybe coach uh, coach Howard has got a couple of tricks up his sleeve yep and you got to think this is now's the time to use it too with one half of soccer left uh, game tied uh, both teams should are going to come out and kind of like it's a new game we did see Pella it only takes one possession for them to get Grace Held uh, involved and she, she took her five feet of space and took one touch and scored. So for the Dutch, they can score really quick. We have seen Waverly with a more concentrated effort, and they've really been able to set up what they want on offense and work through their, their attack. <laughs> As the crowd get rumbling over here in the grandstand, to our left, we've got the Waverly Shell Rock fans, and to the right, we've got the Pella Dutch ladies as we get the second half on the go. The Dutch on defense, and they send the ball up early, sent right back through the midfield. Again, that midfield play is what we talked about. Sarah Campbell went in for a crunching tackle. Ball goes out for a throw. Touch it. Ball now challenged for the Go Hawks. Plena played back in the middle again. Pella's going to look to control it right in this area. That's really key. That's who you want the ball. That's who you want to be having the ball right now. It's some. Held and she plays the ball out of bounds. A little bit frustrated there, didn't get that call. Thought the ball might have been there. Looking at the shape of the Lady Dutch, nothing's changed to the back. The two centre backs are way too far apart. There's a big gap in the middle there. If Rowling finds that, she'll have a field day. Yeah, but it just takes one ball right down the middle. And then it's a one on one, like we talked about. There we go, attack in the middle. There's that open spot. The ref will award a foul there against Pella. So I, thought, I thought maybe you would have given advantage there with Lexi, Lexi uh, rolling, breaking through the middle. I see a little bit of a change in the uh, Pella lineup. Maddie Canefield is up front now with Grace Held. Could be a dangerous... Uh, combination this one's going to go over the top to the keeper off her foot with a chance yet it's another foot on it and just no good chips it over chips it over the goal yeah langan leading back poor technique on that one ball goes over the crossbar maddie canfield should have been in front of the free kick she just allowed her to launch that ball into the box 
slow roller. Pella in trouble here again. More pressure. Reekin and uh, Kennedy Reekin and Kent's down here on the far side, number four and number eight. I mean, the near side for us have been uh, really disruptive for the Gohawks and. Maybe that's uh, an idea of the D the Lady Dutch looking to switch the fields here by changing the side the goal kick is taken. Yeah, they were lucky to get away with that. I mean, that was a, a golden opportunity for Langen, which should have been finished. And the ball comes up towards us. Just does not clear the stands. And a, a no-nonsense clearance there from the back line. Appella sending it out of there. Pella just need to soak up some pressure for about the first uh, 10 minutes of the half. Yep, and a nice idea there. See where they go from there. Kenzie Rowling just a little too much from Langan, the senior. First two, green. Here's the free kick from Pella. A short one again. Says so they take all the time to change the side of the field and then they just go short so which is a interesting yeah. concept rolling there, with a chance breaks onto her left foot has a crack and it's in the back of the net there you go yep she found herself Lots wide open when she got that ball the defenders kind of fell around her rolling is dangerous joe she's very dangerous she can shoot with the left or right foot rolling she scored a goal with her right foot the first half and that's her second foot goal the second of the half, game yeah. yep 30 goals on the year for the freshman, which is pretty ridiculous to look at that. But now two here for her team, the Go Hawks, to put them ahead. This is a time when Pella again needs to just sit back, regroup, regain their confidence here. and Because this game does have a chance at, for what Waverly Shellrock's going for is to score a few more goals. Correct. Waverly Shellrock are booming in confidence right now as they look to break forward down the right once again. They are just tough too and one on one uh, challenges. You can see the Waverly Shellrock uh, girls are always very tough. And they well, If they carry on like this, they will be rocking the yep. back of the net. Yep, the net will open up soon here as the defense opened up on that last goal. Another couple of throw-ins here sequence as the ball uh, gets thrown in and immediately kicked back out. It's hard to see from this side, but here we are again, third throw-in. We are elevated up here in the uh, crowd. Com in the commentary position with a light breeze. Beautiful day in Des Moines, isn't it? Lots that of is sunshine. It beats great the snow, day. to be honest with you, Joe. I'll agree with that one, too. Yep. And this uh, looks like our offside there is over here. Yep. Courtney offsides. Woodcock raises her flag. It was a good decision. Grace Held came from a offside position to an onside position. So yeah, good decision by Courtney. And Held's going to be looking to kind of force the issue up there also as still plenty of time left in this game. But she can she knows knowing they're down, knowing that she can score very fast, she might she's going to look for something here. Yep, I totally agree with the and charge. A little bit of collision between the keeper there and Reichen. Now again, more, more of a tie-up. The ball is still in oh, bounds. A little bit of the uh, argy bargy off the ball. <laughs> Kennedy Reichen from Waverley. Both of them are getting a mouthful from the referee at this point. <laughs> Yep, he's settling them Ailey down. Ellie Bozan was the uh, the other player from Pella. <laughs> Again, a little bit of just chaos down there in the corner. A Always nice makes for play. an exciting game, Joe. Yep, that does makes the tensions rise, makes the fans into it. Grace Hold, well taken on the chest. 
Looks to weave and jive. Good tackle. Maybe not. Yep, it looks like uh, well, the referee did see that one. He's going to give her a foul. I think that went the wrong way. I was thinking they went the wrong way with this call here. The fans, obviously, too, are not uh, with our referees in the crowd. Campbell to step up. She has an option to her left. Actually, a very good option if that ball's played. That was a nice ball right into the mix, but here comes Pella, and a, just a little bit of a missed touch from both teams there. Lovely, lovely tackle there. Well won by Sarah Campbell. And just some miscommunication there. We'll give the ball to Pella here, scrambling to defend their own half as Waverly Shellrock is on the attack. And they're going. Up and in the confusion there. Uh, Hell just tries to go too fast and doesn't really cock back and throw the ball correctly for the violation. Ball in behind. Again. I don't think the back three is really working for uh, Waverly as the ball's played in. Yep, and you can kind of see that too just by the ball accidentally getting behind the line. You, you can't have that even when even every once in a while it'll actually go back, but this is happening a lot over and over again. Reikings causing some problems out here on the left-hand side for Waverly Shell Shock. Shell Rock. I just called them Shock. <laughs> sure, it's been... Might have been... It's been one of those days, hasn't again, it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's hot out here, yeah, Shell Shock. Waverly Shell Rock. A little bit of argy-bargy in the box there. From Natalie Langan. Nothing malicious. Let's play. A high arcing ball in, and Pella gets ahead on it to knock it out. A shot taken and stopped off the gloves and off the top of the crossbar. That ball was going to roll back in, but Chloe Griffin again. It comes up big. She's Chloe she's Griffin let a couple in, but flapped her hands. That little rebound off her hands and onto the crossbar. Nice flick on there for Pella. For Held is trying to get on it and then just a clearance. The problem for Pella is up here is getting numbers up forward. Grace Held desperately trying to get a team rallied here, looking for the equalizer goal. Lovely little layoff there by Rowling. A physical attack down low. It's almost every other player that touches it is on a different team. Again, the play breaks down in the middle for the Gohawks. Here comes Pella with a chance to run. Held's going to send it, look to send it. She's got a player in the middle. Should have played that in front of Kane. As she's moving forward, might have been the better option. Played onto her front foot going forward. Yep, so she could run onto it. Yep. The ball is played behind her. It's kind of stopped the momentum. And, and the linesman's going to call this one out of bounds. Again, moving the ball down for Pella, out of bounds. Held the long throw in. A 
again, more chaos. The ball's just looking to get settled somewhere at someone's feet. We've been working our way up the sideline here as we'll go for a substitution for Waverly Shellrock. Cameron Gore goes off. Cameron has been playing well. Kayla Reed came in for her. Yep. Held again. Nice play outside down the line. It's a foot race for the ball now. It's for positioning. Yep, and both players get tangled up, and Pella gets awarded that one. And the fans here maybe kind of think the referee has been uh, on the Shell Rock side of those calls tonight or excited to get yeah, I think, a free uh, kick. Yeah, give and take a bit of both as a free kick. Deliver it into the box. High onto the goalkeeper. This could be dangerous. Well played. Nice punch out there from the keeper, Gabby Berman. That was big from Abby Berman. Huge. The keeper is out. Plays it off her stomach. Long ball. Boy, that one, again, yeah, that's the benefit here, I was just going to say, is Pella could use one of these to break through here yeah. into their keeper's hands to reset. Comes Waverly and a missed kick out of bounds. Pella. Looks like Pella will bring a substitute in from the far side of the field. Jogging off is Ellie Howard, the sophomore midfielder. They put Lexi, Lexi Brown back into the game. Looks like they made a change here. They've pushed uh, number nine, Sarah Semini, up front. Grace held him behind underneath her. And they've got something going here as held. She really has to run through a couple defenders up there at all times. Yes, I'd agree with that. Bit of a scrum here. And the opposite way, the call will go to the Beverly Shellrock. Julia Reed was fouled off the ball. There's a decent crowd in here today. There's an option to play the ball out right. They bring it left here, trying to play the sideline, and can. Nice defense there from the Pella. Pella Dutch. Twenty-four minutes left in the game. Something might change. Maybe uh, Pella might change the system. Get an extra player up. Maybe play a three-four-three. Three, match them up at the back. Yep. You'd think if they push numbers forward, they can match them up. You'd think that'd be a good option right now. Here is it's. I would wait till about the water break. Yep, so around the twentieth minute, eighteenth minute. Well, a couple more subs for each team. Kennedy Riken with the throw. He comes hailed again. She's kind of uh, held up in this midfield here, looking for looking for help, looking for teammates. Grouse held, looking to the middle to Lexi Brown. Yep, a smart Intercepted. play. Intercepted. Yep, Brown just didn't attack fast enough, and the ball comes back to the keeper. She clears. Uh, she had to clear that quickly because Kozan was coming in like a steam train. Pella, far side of the field, coming down the left, beats a defender and another one, and then the ball is played out of bounds. Looking to run here. Go, go. 
And one by Waverly Shellrock. The throw. Down line rolls behind the defender. Again, another clearance just to roll oh some more time off the clock right in that midfield area that we've kind of been focusing on talking about for the for yeah. this half so far. I might look at something different here and maybe play Grace a little bit higher underneath uh, Semini and uh, Maddie Canefield. So then you've got your support play because they're two very square up front. Or we'll play one and two underneath. There needs to be a little variation. Yeah, they've been... Uh, <laughs> Very good edge defense here. Very good uh, wing defenders for both teams. You've, we've both seen that both teams trying to use yeah. the edges, and they've just been cut off almost every time. Where we've kind of got what we've got here is, you know, neither team can work it off the sideline, and they're right. both, you know, back and forth on the throw-ins. A nice play to set up the middle, wide open breakaway. The Came keeper the gets keeper a foot on it. Shake. Eventually cleared. Oh, but she's limping over there like a little Caroline bit. Caroline Bradley. Griffin. Just got her body in the way to move the path of the ball. Another nice save from Griffin. Into the hands of Griffin. Grace Held needs to play a little bit higher. Looking at it from my angle, I mean, we have a nice bird's eye view. So we can see these options. Yep, we can see when it's developing. And yeah. The uh, problem for her, too, is to she's been between receiving the, the pass that. Yeah. They need to squeeze between the lines, play a little bit higher. Good contest here on the sideline. And again, back to the throw-ins. Looks like we'll take a water break here with 19 minutes, 53 seconds left in this second half. Waverly Shellrock, two, Pella Dutch, one. This is CISN.TV. That's well, very interesting, Joe. I mean, uh, We'll see how they come out after this water break. See if uh, see if there's any changes from uh, Pella. So we'll see what happens. Uh, there could be a couple of options up there for Coach Howard. But we'll see what happens. Yep, and we're going to go ahead and take a break. And we'll be right back here with the uh, exciting finish to this semifinal game on CISN.TV. Start saving through Monday at Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. Up to 25% off. Select new 18 Silverado 1500 Crew Cab LTZ or High Country Editions. Up to 15% off. Select new 18 Suburbans and Tahos. Through Monday, save thousands on hundreds of new Chevys in Waukee. Up to 23% off. Select new 18 Crews and Malibu LTs. Save thousands in Waukee. Hurry in. Offer ends Monday. Schottenkirk Chevrolet on the west end of Hickman, Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. Fast start this is Iowa, and here we don't just dream, we make history by nearly doubling our clean energy as part of our 100% renewable vision. With this, our energy costs will remain some of the lowest in the nation. We'll create new jobs and boost economic growth. Our air will be cleaner, our state stronger, and together we'll advance this country's energy future forever. Mid-American Energy obsessively, relentlessly at your service. This is Iowa. This is your hometown clothing store, the one that had it all, everything to get the work done all in one place. G&L Clothing is your hometown Iowa store. Stop in and see us, or we're only a click or phone call away. Family owned for nearly a century. G&L Clothing, 1801 Ingersoll, Des Moines. G&L Clothing, your size, your style. 
Hello and uh, welcome back to Des Moines, Iowa County Soccer Complex for the 2018 chip on the Mid American Energy Championship Network. I am Joe Danielson, and alongside me is Justin Forrester. As we uh, see the two teams coming back out to take the field, is the Waverly Shellrock Go Hawks, with who are sitting on a two to one lead over the Pella Lady Dutch. We were uh, speculating here to see if we were going to come out in, in the same kind of setup as both teams, looking maybe Pella to change their uh, formation here as they come out of the water break, looking to be more aggressive, more bodies uh, in the attacking position, in the attacking mid position to kind of feed Held up there. We've seen Grace Held really playing her heart out, running all over the place just to receive a ball. And the problem with her is once she works so hard to get a ball and receives it, it's it's hard for her to find a, a player who's open or a player that can support her. So we kind of talked about her getting some support, changing roles, looking for her kind of as she scored that goal in the first half. We saw that. That's when she's up ahead. She has somebody supporting her, feeding her. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see here, Justin. Uh, well, I think, I think, Joe, there's a couple of leaders on this team. I mean... Pella might have it. They don't change anything. I think Pella have a couple of leaders that might take this game by the scruff of the neck and go for it. I mean, they have to. I mean, it's 19 minutes, 20 minutes left in the game. I mean, they've got to go for it now. Yep, and that's the coach. You know, if he says anything to them, they know. They don't. You don't even have to say anything yeah. now with 20 minutes of the season left. As a, uh, however, saying that, I mean, Waverly, Waverly Shellrock have got some players that can do the same thing. They've got leaders on the team just by looking at it. Yep, very true. And this is the time when the uh, the best players step up and they make the best plays for their teams in the crunch time. Again, back to the uh, back and forth kind of exchanging throw-ins that we've seen here as both teams kind of get mucked up on the side of the, the far side of the field. <coughs> there needs to be a little more urgency from Pella just that little more want, the grit determination. Who wants it? Who wants it more? And here we go, Pella on defense. Again, down 2-1. They've been able to do a good job of clearing the ball the second half and then only allowed that goal really on a defensive breakdown down here on the other end. Yep. A little momentum here yep, in favor the, uh, of Waverly. A little off the ball incident. The referee was playing advantage. Which is a good that. thing. I mean it's good to play advantage. Because you never know what can transpire from that with the momentum going forward. Yep, you don't want to make a call that eventually out cancels yep. a goal or an assist or position for one team. A high ball outside. Doesn't get the curve she was looking for onto the end of the, the net. swinger would have been better into the box. Sarah Campbell with the free kick as she runs across to take the corner. Campbell, the senior midfielder. It's one of those players they're looking to step up. Another goal here basically makes you a lot more comfortable. Almost puts this game out of reach with how it's been played so far. Campbell winds up and a nice high archer into the, the box foots are on it another shot here is coming another quick left blocked by Pella again a great defensive stand Griffin got in there initially and now Pella's going to try to 
run with it in reverse field here. This is their chance to run and send a ball out down the middle. Looking for held. Now they're just like Pelo oh, maybe a little tired. Let's a ball yeah, big fly in behind of a one-on-one. On one. Another great stop from Griffin. Just she like I was out. talking about, the gaps between the back three are way too big. And those types of balls are going to cause problems. That was a good opportunity for uh, Haley Kent. And here oh, comes get the that. ball here, almost right. Get your right foot to that. Us. <laughs> We're a little bit to of banter up in the commentary position. <laughs> Trying to protect Joe, the, you're going to uh, show equipment. me some of your skill? <laughs> Looking to... Not going for a header here with the headset on, I'll tell that. Macy Schultz knocked off the ball. Yep. Bella, another good chance here. They've... I believe their second... A uh, free kick here of this half. Come on, Green, scatter! <coughs> Winds up and it's a high, straight down the middle, kind of curves left and unplayable. Ball out, back into that midfield. This is where they do want to kind of keep it and set something up here for the Lady Dutch. Held outside. Running onto it is... Kozen. Kozen. Oh, yep, Kozen. A nice lefty into the box. Good thought. She's back out to her. She'll get another chance at this one. Another left foot into the box. Well read, well won. And uh, throw in here for Waverly Shellrock. Lick Ty had to uh, step in and win that ball. Otherwise, Roland was spinning out and she would have been gone. A little bit of contact. This, your own players ran into each other. Two Dutch players. A nice flick on there from Waverly Shellrock. Kenzie rolling. Here comes the Dutch on the far side of the field attack down the left. Maddie Camefield's off the shoulder, unmarked in the box. That would have been a good chance if they could have gone to the ball. There's another good chance out here for the Dutch. One in and two strong over the top of the net. Good build up play, good movement off the ball. Final yep. delivery was poor. And they got what they wanted right up until the end there. Has to be better. Yep, everything about that was set up. They did have a two players back back post unmarked. A short kick. Pella wins it immediately and they're back on the attack. Long ball over the top. And cleared out of bounds by the keeper. Griffin. Waverly Shawrock trying to stretch Pella with their wide players. Natalie Kent way out here on the left, really trying to stretch them, which is going to create those little gaps in between the lines. They can work in between the left and right back of the center backs. Another nice flick on there from the Sh Waverly Shawrock, the Go Hawks. Pella's taking their time here. 
again the clock is uh, sitting at about 11 minutes 40 seconds now they're gonna have to change the way they're playing at this point <laughs> maybe look to get everything forward and quickly Kind of a bit of a no man's land over here is each team kicking it back and forth to each yep. other, exchanging possessions. Quick Waverly throw. again trying to get a trying to get the ball turned on in. Waverly are controlling the midfield at this point. Yep, they are working the Pella defense a lot better than Pella has been able to work the Shell Rock yeah, defense. Pella need, Pella need to press a little more in the midfield. They're allowing them too much space to play. Ball in the box and no play from Chloe Griffin. She'll reset. For another sub to come in for Bella here. Canefield looking to flick the ball on. Well taken care of. Nice move there. Lovely ball in. Like I said, Reckon. there's a chance, a rebound. Good save by the goalkeeper. Yep, another great save from the goalkeeper. That's about four balls now. She's knocked down with her hands, and she's been able to recover and just bring it into her chest. But like I, like I said to you, again, Kurt. Kurt got in between. The, yep, center back, uh, the center back and the left back. When you're an attacking player and you can see that and they're not going to change it no. later on in the game you're you're just you're going to let your other teammates know hey get me the ball I'll be open yes exactly here comes Pella far side of the field four attacking players and down in the box two on one down here just can't get a foot on it good moving Lectai did actually very Lectai did very well there. She had there to we stop again. that, otherwise they were done. Here's a net. Keeper did well to narrow the angle. Yep, Coming out, flick Griffin. on and the keeper Griffin. Chloe Griffin's really had a great day and in goal. Just she affected that shot by just coming out and challenging. Ball nice ball this could down be a the problem. Middle. That's the type of ball they need to start looking for, Joe. Yep, to held, to held up there up front, and they're looking to get the other team off balance. Need to be, need to be a little more direct. Pella, the clear. And we're under 10 minutes now with 7 minutes 30 seconds remaining in this game. Waverly Shellrock out in front of goal. Controlling the ball on Pella's, Pella's defensive side of the field. The ball ricochets off a defender back into Griffin's hands. Riken did well there. She's a very strong player, cutting in onto her right foot, but just ran into pressure. And a little bit too aggressive Looks there. Looks like uh, Grace Held's going to have a talking to. And he'll give her a yellow, yellow card. card. 
And I think that's because he talked to her early on in the game. Maybe, you know, let her know, hey, if I have to talk to you again, it might be, a, it's going to be a yellow card. Yeah. And he pulled it out this time. Here's a little, here's a ball that she could play. If they can get the ball into Riken over here on the left, it's 2v1. Well, we just got word that Lewis Central in the other Class 2A semi final have just won 2 0, so they're on to the finals. We'll beat the winner of this game. Yep, and here comes Pella now again without held uh, up front. That's big that she got. The yellow card. She was really their uh, their point that they were looking to up front to try to get their offense working through. <laughs> Again, cleared back out for a repeat of the hand of the uh, throw in. Here comes Pella with a chance, looking for something to get into the box. Five minutes to go. Pella look like they're very tired. They've just got to dig deep and start pushing forward, play a little more direct, see if they can get the ball in behind, work to the strengths. Again, midfield play, just kind of back and forth here. Waverly Shovak's got a ball outside and they play it. Looks Again, like they've broken the line. Keeper's done well. Griffin's come out to deal with that. But Roland broke the line, got inside. So loft the ball in. This looks a like high ball in point. and just too long over the goal. Griffin is tired. You can see her just with her hands on her knees. A lot of running that play. Griffin's been put through her paces today. She's pulled up some saves. She's done a lot of work. Canefield did well there to come out of trouble, break the pressure. Up oh, and we've got a bunch of back and forth fouling. He doesn't. There's a little bit of both there, to be trying honest. Trying to with let you. that go, not to commentate on that while it's happening, just so we can kind of see what's what's going on there. But it, one player was shoved to the ground. The Pella Dutch shoved to the ground afterwards, and nothing there. I think it was a little bit of both. A little bit worried about this gap in the middle of the goal here. I'd yeah. rather go zonal in there. We could see that large hole there. Is yeah. just no play as it's wide over the net. So again, tensions tensions are rising here again. Sarah so Campbell opted to go on goal, which just eluded the goal. To be honest with you. Pella clears, clears again, looking to get one over the top. Shawrock, somebody's got to come through here for Pella to put a ball in play. But you got a three minutes, close to three minutes left. Roland again cuts in onto her left foot. This is dangerous. Again, yep, great touch to get it to her left and a nice play on goal. Chloe Griffin again with the with the stop. And here comes Shellrock again, just responding. Pella's gonna need something to happen Pella here. Been, they're being closed down very quickly in the midfield, not allowing them to play the long ball forward. Trying to play a little more direct to get it in behind. They just can't do it right now. Campbell looks to build it out the back. Yep, they're looking for somebody to make a play here. <laughs> A 
And we have a stoppage. Yep, and we're back. It's a little bit more of chaos, just giving the ball back for each team, back and forth. Pelé again at this point just looking to possess the ball and send it forward. They can't do so right now. Pelé, Pelé being pushed very deep by Waverly, which is not allowing them to come out and even their two forwards are being pushed deep. So they're not having real, real, not really having any options and plus Waverly are controlling the midfield right now. Like I said to you, this would be one in the midfield as they go in for a chance. That looks like it could be a penalty and it is. Yep, and a late penalty here is awarded to Waverly Shellrock, and we kind of look and there's some, uh, there's a little bit of arguing out on the field, and if you're Pella, you don't want to, you don't want anything more to happen onto this, because I mean, if Waverly Shellrock puts this ball in the net, it's about, you could about call it game. Pretty much so, with a minute and 20 seconds left, Sarah Campbell steps up, right footed. Takes a look at the goalkeeper, the referee. Steps up. And she goes. And slots right it home close. off the post. Yep, no that's trouble it for there. Today. For I think her. that's game over, to be honest with you. And you you got to feel for Chloe Griffin there in, in the net. Yeah. Uh, a really a great performance from her on Chloe. the field. She's really responded well. Chloe Griff Griffin's had a good game so far. I mean, she's done well. this point go Hawks want to just play uh, play strong play calm to the end of the match here nice you don't want any Back injuries any fouls nice strong tackle again in the midfield uh, some, some good battles out there some serious tackles a good line cover drive, from Campbell. Yep. A nice line drive to send it out of there from Campbell. Looking like her PK. Campbell came across and dealt with it. Good cover. Again, Waverly Shellrock just clearing everything out of here. There's only seconds left on the clock. This could be game. Grace Held looking for something in there. Cleared away by Campbell again. Again, another little, another clearance with about 10 left here. There might be some extra time. And another foul called here. And this one this will looks take like the it's clock game out. over. Good job, ref. As some of the Pella players embrace themselves, obviously in sadness. Yep, you see Grace held there. She really tried all. Every, all of her options today here uh, up top. And that will do it here for CISN.TV. We've got Ankeny Shellrock, Gohawks 3, the Pella Lady Dutch 1. We run down uh, a little bit of the scoring. We had uh, Sarah Campbell with that PK, and then we had... Uh, rolling with 2. Yep, rolling with 2, eight, 1 each foot. Yep. And one in the, the first half, one in the Dutch, second half. Grace Held scored that first opening goal. All right, so I think we're going to wrap her up here from the County Soccer Complex. My name is Joe Danielson alongside with Justin Forrester. Uh, this has been the number one social streaming platform dedicated exclusively to local Iowa sports, CISN.TV, and you are watching the 2018 Iowa Farm Bureau Girls State Soccer Championships presented by the Mid-American Energy Championship Network. Thank you for tuning in. And